Do you guys disagree on the self immolation thing? I don't know what we do. This. Every form of extreme political violence is coming from people that are mentally unwell because those are probably going to be the first affected people by extremist rhetoric, are going to be the people that are on the edges of like sanity, you know? What do you want, boner box? Um, I thought you were asking for me. Someone in my chat said that. Oh. They said you were crying. I'm always crying. Um, how you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. Um, what have you been doing today? I watched the uh, Sean and Noah Samson videos, the full Noah one and some of the Sean one, then I got bored. How is the, uh, I tried to skim through the Sean one and every, I think I got hit like 10 different checkpoints and every single one is just talking about how evil Israel is, so. Yeah, I mean, the, the Sean one, at least, at least it, he was one part where he describes Israel uh, from 48 as a British colony, like established as a British colony, which is kind of weird. Based, okay. There's like kind after of the like terrorist a, a, attacks, uh, you know, from after the Arab revolts from the uh, Jews to the Brits and the Brits saying, fuck this and leaving and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. There's a kind of like misunderstanding about, uh, there's, a mis there's a quote from Arthur Balfour where he's basically talking about, it's like the end of this sort of like 10 paragraph piece that he gives where he basically says that um, like part of the argument for the Jewish state would be that it'll uh, stop like European countries from having to deal with uh, immigrants, like Jewish immigrants who are like hostile and unfriendly. So then he kind of projects onto that, that like our uh, Balfour did the Balfour Declaration because he was like xenophobic. And then he invokes like Richard Spencer supporting Zionism as a way to get the Jews out. And he's going to make that comparison. But if you read the whole text of what Balfour's saying, and like everything else Balfour says, Balfour's whole take on uh, Jews having to leave Europe to go to Palestine is because he believes that Europe and the Christian world had fucked over Jews so hard and made them homeless for so long and gar and uh, treated them as lesser people for so long that Jews like basically rightfully insulated themselves and didn't want to have any loyalty to those states going forward. And that's the argument he's making. He's making the argument that like Jews don't owe Europe anything. Like that's why he see he kind of saw Zionism as like Britain's way of repaying the Jews for like the wrongs of the Christian world. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's just like context. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, it makes but sense. But it's basically the, like a native trying to say Zionism is anti Semitism is like kind of one of those lines that people like to push. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, um, the Noah one is just him repeating the South African court case, basically. Case. Fuck, I haven't. I still haven't read that. Um, I have to tonight, or I might read it on the I mean, tomorrow. Do you think? Is there any? I heard one thing about because this would be worth it rhetorically that a lot of the um, that a lot of the quotes are actually clip chimped in the in the South African ICJ submission. Do you know if that's true? Have you gone through any yeah, of the quotes? Yeah, I said that to you. Yeah. Oh, you're one of the people that said yeah, that. Okay. I've had a lot of people email me yeah. say this. Um, yeah, um, they're very clip chimped. I mean, some of them, yeah, like like the Amalek one is clip chimped. The fucking um, human animals one, I think, is clip chimped. Yeah, there's a few of them that are just very much like the, in the paragraph literally before and after one of those, um, they specify Hamas. They say we are fighting Hamas. Yeah, I've, I've seen those. I remember looking those up at the time like months ago. Yeah. And obviously, you know, the Amalek thing about how, like, people say Amalek is like a, because in the religious text about Amalek, they actually talk about killing all the women and children, right? Like, that's like the- I've heard the Amalek there. thing get caught up a lot, yeah. But it's also just another thing of like, um, it's it's the literal meaning of a word or the, how the word is actually used. Because Amalek has been used in like Holocaust memorials. It's like, there's a, in, do, you, do you know the Amalek monument in The Hague? Nope. In The in the Hague, like where they have the fucking ICJ and shit, they're- is an Amalek monument with the Star of David and like some people and it's uh, underneath it it says remember what Amalek did to you never forget and it's in the fucking Hague like <laughs> it's on one of the buildings so it's like are they is, is that why is there a monument in the Hague calling for a genocide of the Germans by calling them Amalek like no it's just like that's how they use the term gotcha okay um, so like a never forget thing yeah anyway um, the problem is is that I'm pretty sure in like the if you're submitting a case to the to a court, mm -hmm. you do kind of have to throw everything against the wall and hope something sticks. So I don't blame like South Africa for having some 
weird shit in there that's not really going to fly because all they need is like a few things that the court considers plausible and they're obviously needing to make their opposition defend everything so you probably would need to see the whole thing to see if it's actually there's anything in there worth keeping sure but, i will say though that um you uh ooh, i'm trying to think at least for u.s standards i don't think you're supposed to just throw everything at the wall to see what sticks you're supposed to have a good faith engagement with the court system and it wouldn't Fuck, I'm speaking out of my ass, but I would wonder if you could get like a either summary judgment or motion to dismiss in pretrial if somebody was including their complaint stuff that was like clearly fabricated or clearly taken out of context. I don't know if the case mm -hmm. would stand on its merits if somebody was cl clearly false. I need more crim law friends. I will, all of them are sell out corporate lawyer fucks. Um, but I don't, I don't know if you're allowed to just throw in whatever. I used to think that prosecutions could do that in the US and then somebody pointed me to a standard in US courts where that's actually not true. The prosecution at the very least for criminal stuff is supposed to behave in good faith. Like if you find exculpatory stuff, you have to turn it over to the defense. Or if, if you're like quoting stuff or if you're citing evidence in a, in a complaint or in an indictment and you know it's not really that solid that you can get in big trouble for that. Like a mistrial could be declared or the case might get thrown out or whatever. But ICJ obviously might be completely different everything. I don't know. It might be permissible to gish gallop the ICJ. <laughs> it might, might actually be, yeah. Um, yeah, well. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Let's see. Um, how, what have you been, uh, oh, what did you, wait, did you see you covered those two videos today or was that yesterday? Just today. <sighs> okay. Otherwise, I've just been reading little bits <laughs> here and there. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, let me just run through this outline again. I still, I think I need to fill out like two more sections of this, but, um, let me, um, <clears throat> see if there's anything else I might have questions about. Let me scroll from top to bottom. <laughs> oh, real quick for historical examples. Um, so ethnic cleansing is a term that is used. Uh, has it been applied to anything except for like Israel and Bosnia and Herzegovina or whatever the fuck? The Serbian has it has it ever been applied anywhere else? Because I saw people were bringing up examples of like, for instance, when Russia was attacking Ukraine, a lot of Ukrainians were fleeing cities, obviously because they didn't want to get killed. But people weren't calling that ethnic cleansing. Um, um, yeah, I don't know that one. I don't think so. I mean, St Stalin did quite a few ethnic cleansings, right? Like the ethnic cleansing of the Crimean Tatars in '44. Wait, that was... did Stalin do ethnic cleansings, or was this ethnic cleansing as, as like an overall thing that was like more akin to genocide than anything else? No, the removal of the Tatars was just he deported all of them. He just deported all of them to fucking Uzbekistan um, on little trains, but that wasn't ever seen as a genocide. I don't think. Were a ton of these people not killed? I don't remember for. Um, for the Soviet shit, if they were killed. Or like, not. it wasn't the same as the... Yeah, people did die on the way, but I don't think it was the same kind of, like, intent that okay, went alongside gotcha, gotcha. Armenia, for example. Yeah. Um, do you think that... Um, Russia kind of moved around a lot of populations, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the, I think the process is called... Rus I read and for the Soviet stuff, and I think even pre-Soviet Union and the old empires or whatever, it was called Russification, where mm -hmm. the Russian empires have always kind of, like, moved in a lot of their people, moved around a lot of other people to try to, like get a stronger ethnic and linguistic and cultural grasp on whatever territory they had. Yeah, it depends on who you're talking to. Like it was, yeah, it was all different kinds of ethnic groups, like millions of them in total. Um, generally people call it like, uh, I think in the Wikipedia, they call it population transfer, but yeah, yeah other people do call it ethnic cleansings. I feel like trans very much ethnic groups. Transfer you know? seemed to be the term that's used a lot. I don't know if I've seen ethnic cleansing besides like the last 20 years applied to Israel. It feels like everybody just calls it transfer, population transfer. Yeah, transfer is like the, it's, it's just a euphemism though, isn't it? For expulsion or like. Well, I just, I really, yeah. the term ethnic cleansing like implies a lot. The, re the reason mm -hmm. I don't like ethnic cleansing is because the implication for ethnic cleansing is that based on an ethnicity, you're cleaning away like dirty people, which I think is a much mm -hmm. different co uh, connotation than like population transfer relating to like times of war or, or, or conflict. 
Yeah, or doing it for political reasons rather than like racist yeah. reasons, another thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I would say like part of conflict, like political reasons. Yeah, basically, yeah. That I, I feel like that's a it's a much different connotation. Ethnic cleansing carries like heavy connotations of racial superiority or or racial domination. I think, it, but it's a weird thing because I don't know if that's like ever applied to any other type of thing. I guess. Yeah, I mean, people people use it all the time for all the like Soviet movements, and people use it for. Uh, yeah, but even people use it. I've heard people use it for things that they justify as well, right? For the uh, Germans in the Sudetenland, like and Poland and Central Europe, and pushing them back to Germany. People recall that in ethnic cleansing. So Real, I've never um, heard that before. And any of my studying of like of any of the other stuff related to like Russia, Ukraine, I don't think I ever saw the term ethnic cleansing. Uh, yeah, maybe I mean, it usually it's it more of an before. activist term. Yeah, like sure. it's mostly yeah. It's well, often that, well, yeah, that's term. like my. I think that was my point. I said it was like an activist thing. Mm -hmm. um, what did I read initially? Was it actually like 12, oh, 12 to 14.6 million people? That's an insane amount of people. Wait, for after, so after World War II, uh, Germans just like fled from a whole bunch of fucking territories and what, went back to Germany and then never got invited back or? Yep, uh, millions and millions of them went, some of them fled, some were actually taken by the Nazis as the Nazis were retreating. And then the remaining couple, like two or three, four million were actually pushed back by the allies. Quite brutally as well. Like quite a few people starved to death in the way. Mm -hmm. Do you know there are like center left historians who justify it? Really? How? Not the way it was done, obviously, but they do justify the idea of having to transfer uh, Germans from that area because their entire existence for like that whole period had basically just been weaponized as a as an excuse for Germany to annex things in the future. And they were very worried about like any re-emerging German state doing the same thing further down the line. Oh. Um, and also they, some of them had lived there for centuries, but they, the overwhelming majority of them were like proper fucking German supremacists. Like they had no interest in having anything to do with like an independent Czech Republic or an independent fucking Poland or anything like that. So, um, and that might have, like, people argue that because of their position, they might have, like, fucked the stability of those states going forward. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, people do try to say it was it had, like, some rationale behind it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so my edgy statement two months ago, I think, was true, that not all ethnic cleansings are bad. If ethnic cleansing is mm -hmm. going to just be defined as... Um, um, as, as population transfer without any, yeah. I do think that, I really truly do feel like if you were to poll in America, I bet it's the same in fucking Europe, but I think if you polled in America what ethnic cleansing meant, I think over 50% of people would heavily associate it with genocide, like actually killing mm -hmm. people, not just, I think it would be over 50%. Um, Raphael Lemkin originally wanted it to be number six as the acts of genocide. He wanted ethnic cleansing, like removal to be one of the acts and the UN was like, no. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I know there was the huge, uh, of massive population transfer between uh, Greece and Germany. But I'm sorry, not Greece and Germany, my bad, uh, Greece and Turkey. Yeah, yeah. Um, 1923. I just having, I don't know if, like, if any of this would ever come up, but it's just gonna have examples on hand. Um, 1.6 between Greece and Turkey. Somebody said population transfer between India and Pakistan. How many people was yep. that? Millions, like seven million. Yeah, seven, was it seven million. Mil Wait, was it seven? I think it might have been seven million on each side. Seven That's million right. Hindus leaving Pakistan and going to India, and seven million Muslims going from India to Pakistan, maybe, or seven million total. It's seven million something. Sixteen million people. Holy shit! I don't know anything about mm -hmm. Indian history. Anything further east of like. 
<laughs> really of Iraq. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. <laughs> For Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and then India. Yeah. India is a whole thing on its own. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I mean, I know one person who uh, came from, like, their family came from Lahore uh, in Pakistan, and they were Hindu, so they went, they had to just like, abandon everything and go and set up in, like, fucking Delhi or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but yeah, that was it. Like, they just, they just left everything behind, ran away, because, like, I think, like, a million people died, the ones who stayed in each respective country. So it was pretty messy. And... But yeah, they're the ones who live in India are Indians now, and the ones who live in Pakistan are Pakistani. It's interesting. I look so I I looked up this partition of India for ethnic cleansing, um, and it's interesting that in the sources below, uh, for ethnic cleansing, the citation for one book is a book published in 2012, and then the other two are citations of a book published in 2009. It's it's hard because I don't think with I don't know that much about partition of India, but like I think the flight was mostly because of just like mobs and like local riots i don't think there was actually like any indian or pakistani regime trying to i might be completely wrong though but mm -hmm. um i mean yeah you could still call it that i guess because people like to use it loosely for other things so um. sure i guess the one thing that i um one thing that i think is important is that uh because israel is is presented as like uniquely fucking horrible terrible bad in regards to the stuff in 47 to 48 like ethnic cleansing is thrown around the refugees it's like uniquely horribly a terrible thing but it it feels to me i'm saying feeling because i don't my world history is not the best but it feels to me like it was actually fairly par for the course for whenever major conflict happened um that one territory might change a little bit especially in the case of wars or two that population transfer would happen after it because people just like move massively from one area to the next in regards to conflict but all of that like nobody really talks about any of that it just feels like if, i feel like if you were listening to people talk about israel palestine you would think this is one of the only places in the world except for maybe uh maybe bosnia and maybe with hitler and germany like it's like it's basically it's, it's the serbs it's the nazis and it's the jews that have done ethnic cleansing and everything else is more or less kosher that's what it feels like yeah the uh, second video second thought video i watched he was saying that there's like there's uh the Nakba's up there with the Holocaust. He <laughs> like Based. word for word basically said something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. I, it's it did happen quite a lot in the formation of nation states, right? I guess the difference is is that um, the reason more attention is drawn to the Nakba compared to other ethnic cleansings is that most of these other ethnic cleansings or removals or transfers, whatever you want to call them, is that the people like from Pakistan went to India and became Indians, and that was it. Yeah. Done. Yep. Uh, whereas the Palestinian refugee problem is like it's been kept alive, so that's kind, kind of, of why. Yeah. Which plays into my other role of like the Pal the refugee problem like needs to stop being. Uh, artificially prolonged by Ernwa. Like there has to be an attempt to settle people. There has to be an attempt to uh, not keep people permanently in refugee camps to further the conflict. It makes it more and more intractable. As do the settlements from Israeli side and everything mm -hmm. too. Yeah. It's Unra, by the way, not Unwarara. Un Unra. 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 Yeah. Unra. Unra. Well, yeah. I mean, whatever. even if you, I, I, I never make this point because it's just so optically stupid to say, but um, it's true. Compared to other 20th century conflicts, um, the 1948 war, and you can say this for both sides, was fairly like low when it came to atrocities and like just like overall causing of like suffering, right? Like compared to World oh. War II or compared to the Yugoslav wars and all that, like mm -hmm. both the Arabs and the uh, Zionists compared to those other wars mm -hmm. were like a lot more well behaved when it came to like taking prisoners and all that shit. Obviously there were still massacres on both sides and there were still uh, like half of an entire population uprooted, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Or you can also, I, I do. don't know, do you know about like how um, the refugee problem, obviously, like it wasn't just an, it was mostly an Arab refugee problem, but there were like tens of thousands of Jews who were displaced as well during that war. Uh, yeah, from the, they were all technically Israel, ethnically yeah. cleansed from the West Bank, right? That's part of, I think, where like the Sheikh Jarrah controversy and everything came from in 2008. Yeah. Um, was people fighting over like, hey, well, we were in East Jerusalem, we got kicked out by Jordanian, so we should be able to get this apartment and shit back. Um, yeah, and I mean, the, yeah, the West Bank was like fairly lower numbers, but also just within Israel itself, like people in settlements that were a bit further away from the main cities and were in, uh, especially settlements that were surrounded by Arab villages, a lot of them got uprooted as well. Mm -hmm. The only difference, I guess, is that like Jews didn't really have other countries they felt like they could go to, so they just had to kind of stay there. And yeah. Just take it and hope for the best right yeah. mm -hmm. 
Um, I will say it was, it's really interesting going over um, the, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Maybe my mind is like poisoned as an American, but when we think of like, you know, like World War I and World War II, I'm thinking like, oh my God, that's, Dresden got bombed. Uh, what was, was it? I, don't, I should know this. Is Dresden 60,000 people dead? How many people died in the Dresden bombings? I thought the bombings was 25,000. Maybe it was 25,000. Fuck you, okay. But Siege of Leningrad, you got like a million and a half. Yeah, holy Soviet shit, yeah. Or yeah. like the fire bombings of Tokyo, that one might have been 60,000 um, or 70,000. Um, but yeah, and then the bombings of Marasaki, like I'm thinking like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, like all these deaths, blah, blah, blah. And then it's just not to, not to take away from the human suffering or say that any of this was okay or to excuse any of it. But it's just really interesting that when you read about the, like the massacres that happen uh, between like Israel and Palestine, like the, um, like one of the most famous massacres, at least for the early histories, is Deir Yassin, if you consider them a massacre, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the Deir Yassin massacre is like, isn't it like, it's like a hundred people dead, right? Mm -hmm. Which is bad. It's not good, but it's yeah. It's interesting how I don't want to say low stakes, but it's interesting how small the numbers are in this conflict. But again, yeah, when people talk about it, you might think like, man, you know, Darius seen, I don't know, ten thousand Arabs must have been killed, or you know, this many people must have been getting holocausted, or this many people. But the casualty numbers for all of this conflict is surprisingly low, given how much like voice uh, is is given to you know like this particular conflict. Yeah. Um, yeah, like because the only the only two arguments you can make that really um, make it more that kind of amplify it a little bit is that at least for the uh, Arab side, uh, even though yeah, seven hundred thousand is a as a proportion that was half of the Arab population in Palestine. So in terms of understanding like the collective trauma and the inherited like family uh, suffering and all that kind of stuff, like yeah, it spread throughout the like the entire community basically because everyone knew someone who had been displaced. Sure. Um, and the other argument, I guess, is like the yeah the UNRWA thing that they're still going. But it's funny that like people will um, they'll like oppose the NATO intervention in uh, Yugoslavia when again like how many Kosovar Albanians were displaced during that war? It was about eight hundred thousand, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then like the Bosnian war, like you had like Srebrenica where eight thousand people were killed in the space of what like two days, yeah. uh, fucking rape camps and shit like that. So yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot, definitely from the last two videos I watched, they're very much like, it just looks like people, that, that fucking Noah Samson video, it looks like it's just someone who's seen a war happen for the first time, right? And they're just like... Yeah, exactly, and, yeah. And, and, and even like... they're processing it, yeah. And even what people like pay attention to and what people, even, I feel like even on the Palestinian side, I'm curious, and I could be totally wrong because I just only see, I'm just, I'm just, I'm almost qualifying that because maybe there are places where people talk about this way more. I feel like for Palestinians, when I look on Twitter, like everybody knows like Dare You Seen. Everybody knows the Nakba. I don't think I've ever in my entire life seen like a Palestinian bring up like the Sabra and Shatila stuff. Shatila or Shatila in uh, in Lebanon. I don't think I've ever oh, they seen bring that. Up all the time. Do That's they? Really oh, okay. Common. I've never yeah. seen that brought up on Twitter before by any pro Palestinian people. And that was actually like thousands of people uh, dead, depending on whose numbers you take. So. Um, but what people, um, what I know, I've, I know Israelis got frustrated with this is because in the Lebanese civil war, Sabra Shatila was one of quite a few massacres that were just as bad. Like um, Carantina, which was again, it was Christians killing Palestinians. That was about the same number. And Damour was one where the PLO murdered Christians. And that was like a few hundred as well. Mm -hmm. There were loads of massacres in the Lebanese civil war. But yeah, the one that we talk about mostly is Sabra Shatila because Israel was involved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I've got open air prison concentration camps. There is no universal, there's no definition of concentration camp or open air prison, right? These are just like totally. Not that I know of. Okay. Um, do you have any, I tried to follow this rabbit hole last night. Do you know how much Palestinian leadership is worth? I've heard um, Abbas is about a hundred million. I've heard fucking Hania ranging from anything like 400 million to 4 billion. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I tried to, um, okay, this was the rabbit hole that I went down. It was very funny. Uh, Cause I, I was gonna include this, but now I don't know how I feel about this. Um, wealth, I wanna re, fuck, can I do this rabbit hole? Okay, so <clears throat> there's a New York Post article that was cited by a, I think it was a Times of Israel Post. Wait. Or it might have even been this. Um, wait, do you know what I-24 News is in terms of reputation or anything? I-24? Yeah. It's like Israeli right-leaning, I think. Is it? Okay, that's good to know. I think so. I don't know, but it's it's Israeli, right? I, I truly have I no idea. I think they're right-leaning, but okay. I don't know. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can find the rabbit hole. Fuck, I'm not going to find it. God damn it. One of these websites basically was saying that collectively, the Hamas leadership is worth $11 billion. 
Um, okay. And then there, and I clicked the source. I was like, well, what is the source on that? And then that took me to a New York Post source. Uh, Hamas leaders worth a staggering $11 billion. And I'm like, okay, I'm curious how you would even know that, right? Like, how, do, how does anybody know the net worth of a black market smuggler Hamas leader, right? If they, if they, assuming that's how they make their money, it's what my assumption would be, right? Um, mm -hmm. Then when I went through this, so a terror group's top three leaders alone are worth a staggering $11 billion. Um, I see this picture here, okay? One of the sons of, Ham uh, is, of Hamas leader Ismail Haniya, Haniya uh, lounges in a luxury hotel suite in Qatar. Hania is worth more than $4 billion, okay? These are big, big, big numbers, okay? $4 billion, okay? Um, so I tried to scroll down through this. Um, uh, Abu Murzuk, uh, 72, a senior Hamas political leader who heads its international relations office is estimated by the Israeli government to be worth $3 billion. Oh God, what was the next link that I clicked from this? Oh fuck, I didn't click one, I tried to Google it. I tried to Google around for net worth, oh wait, wait maybe it was net worth Hania. Yeah, the estimates for him go quite wild, right? They go from like a few hundred million to four billion or some shit, yeah. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to goddamn find it. This shit was retarded. Oh wait, it might've been this page, hold on. Okay, there's a tweet by Embassy of Israel to the USA. I don't even know if this is the real embassy in Israel. Basically, yeah, it's kind of what you're saying. The ranges were more significant because I found a website that was saying Hania was worth $4 billion, and the other two guys were worth $5 million. <laughs> and I don't know if it was a typo or if it's just like, I don't know, if, is, is there any accurate? I have no idea. I'm sure they're just... wealthy. That seems to be obvious, but... Yeah. Yeah, fuck me. Okay, I, don't I mean, they that. basically live in hotels, don't they? They live in hotels in uh, uh, Doha, and sometimes they go to Turkey. That is true, and uh, not to flex my out-of-touch millionaire status too much, but like, I could stay at nine hundred dollar night hotels for an entire year, and that would be a whatever. It, I wouldn't. It wouldn't bother me. But I'm not a billionaire. There's a huge difference yeah. between being like a net worth five million versus net worth four yeah, billion. Yeah. <laughs> that's a huge discrepancy. And it's just like if a, if one of these leaders is worth like a couple million, like yeah, that's that's obviously probably corrupt. Maybe I guess depending on age and everything. Uh, but like him staying at like nine hundred dollar a night hotels, that's not indicative of him being a billionaire. That's an insanely huge number. I'm just curious. If there was a source of that. Fourth thought, what do you want? I thought you wanted to fight with me over the uh, Reddit post. Um, what do we, oh, you think setting yourself on fire is an acceptable form of protest? Um, in a democracy? Yeah. I yeah. Think. Why do you think it's not? I feel like extreme acts like that, I think should be reserved for when y your voice is like literally being suppressed, like you can't be heard. So like in a situation where you might be living under a dictatorship, you might be in prison, your rights are being restricted for some reason. Um, forethought is quiet. Yep, tell him to fix his mic. I don't know why. I don't know why. Tell him to fix well, it. You could have told me I moved so all my- Yeah, but those are, what you just said are reasons why it's bad for you to do it. Obviously it's fucking stupid if you, have, if you can do activism or boycott or whatever, but mm -hmm. like, um, what if you just want to? What if you're just like retarded and you want to burn yourself? Well, I mean, if you're retarded and want to do it, then you can do it. But it's about it being like encouraged okay. or supported. I think it's really scary that people are supporting an American citizen who lives in a democracy setting himself on fire for a cause. It just seems really test, silly. Test. I think there's like other things. You should boost your volume by like 10 times. You're super, super, super quiet. Oh shit, like here's another tweet by the uh, Israel MFA. The Israeli Foreign Ministry. Again, I'm not sure if this is actually them or just a random fuck account. Um, Hamas leaders are, li are lining their pockets at the expense of millions of innocent Palestinians. So we've got uh, Khaled Mishal, five billion. Uh, Musa Abu Marzouk, three billion. And then Ismail Haniye, five million? <laughs> like, why is he even listed here? I just think it's kind of funny. Um, oh, gray check equals government account. Oh, that's nice. Thanks, Elon. I think Kenya is like the leader of Hamas, right? Like the number one leader. Uh, right now, I believe that is the case, yes. Yeah. But Ismail. Ismail. Okay. Try again. Is this still super quiet? I don't think you're, are you even changing anything? Hold oh, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Why do, what do people do when they say, is it still quiet, but nothing has changed? Do they realize, are they just fucking with me? Are they turning random knobs on their desk and they hope that like something is happening or? I couldn't tell you. I mean, if I was really stupid, I could turn my monitoring up and think I'm turning myself up to you, but. Okay. Oh, wait, Khaled Michelle is famous for being a billionaire, by the way. That's been known forever. 
Oh, maybe. He, yeah. That was one of the guys where I tried to look him up, and they were saying like he has portfolios, including investments in tons of different like banks and everything as well. So maybe. Michelle was the guy who was leader very briefly when they wrote that new charter in 2017. Gotcha. God, he looks. Okay, follow me here. Follow me. Hold on. Hmm. Middle Eastern George Clooney. A little bit. Right, guys? A little bit. A little bit. Right? Which one are we talking about? Michelle. Yeah, a little bit. Middle Eastern George Clooney. Mm. No, I, that's all I need. Mm, that's fine. It's good enough for me. I do think that it's, it's really that funny. Salt and pepper beard. I want one of those when I'm older. They I do look salt and pepper beard. super nice. I do agree, yeah. Um, I do think it's funny the virtue signaling that goes on between people that live in certain areas, like where they come from and citing where they come from, when in reality they're from super wealthy families. Uh, not to call out mm. anybody in particular because I love all of my employees equally, but like for instance, like uh, Karantos, you're familiar with him, right? Yeah. Yeah, like comes from Somalia, Somalia, Somalia and everything, but like very clearly he's from like an incredibly wealthy family. He does like really well. He goes to school in Malaysia, blah, blah, blah. But it's funny. Uh, I feel like a lot of that sometimes happens with some of these Palestinian leaders too, where like, oh, I'm Palestinian, blah, blah, blah. But they're obviously they're from incredibly wealthy families. They're like international people. They're well-traveled, well-educated, went to school in London, Hassanabis, you know, those types of people. Yeah, but Carantos deserves all the wealth and he deserves to complain about it. True and based. Um, okay, so we've got Hamas administration. <sighs> Have you seen anything compelling that shows that the living conditions in the Gaza Strip are horrible? What, now? Uh, no, 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 not now, not post October 7th, but prior to October 7th? Um, so unemployment was a pretty big issue. Um, Food insecurity, again, when I say food insecurity, I mean like, um, you know what I mean, it's fine. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't know what you mean by horrible. Do you mean like well, concentration camp? Level I mean or, like or, concentration like, camp, open air prison, because one of the biggest justifications no, that I, Finkelstein gives for Hamas's justification for war on October 7th was them living under uh, uh, concentration camp conditions. Which concentration camp is comparable to Gaza? That would That's my question, know. yeah. But hold on, wait. If I ask that, am I gonna get fucking dunked on? Was there like some fucking luxurious concentration, like Norwegian concentration camp where everybody went and they were like hanging out in bed and like, am I gonna get okay, fucked on that point? Them. Them. The fucking South so the the South African ones, the the, the British, where well, that was like the first widespread use of them. I think like the death rate was about a third or a quarter um, within a two years. That was pretty fucked up. Um, what else, like? Any of the German ones? They're not going to say any of the German ones. Like, well, they might say. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, <laughs> well, no, it depends. Though. It, it's such a stupid comparison because in a concentration camp, like you might be getting tortured for your political beliefs, and you're in there for no reason at all, and like you're in a confined space, and like you're, you might be getting diseases and shit, but you might not get bombed. So I don't know. Like, take it early. I don't know. Like, I know with Gaza, the big problems are like unemployment. I think uh, youth PTSD is a thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, occasionally, like, obviously, the economic insecurity is a thing, which, again, the locals One blame thing, the last point. Yeah, time, fuck. But, yeah. Somebody just said this in YouTube chat, and I I was going to say this, but I don't know if this is too mean. Does unemployment matter that much when you've got so much foreign aid coming? Like, unemployment, um, if I say, like, first order, second order, third order problems, you understand what I mean by that, right? Mm -hmm. That, like, maybe, like, uh, like, yeah. So I feel like unemployment is, like, one of those would you consider it like a first order problem, but like the second or third order, or maybe it would be, because like unemployment isn't necessarily bad. Technically being jobless is fucking awesome. The bad thing is yeah. not having money to afford food or not having food. That's like your first order. Like not having food is really bad. And the second order is like not having money for food would be bad. The third order is like not having a job to earn money for food might be bad. But like if you have all your food and all of your needs are met, does the unemployment matter that much? <laughs> Um, I think the aid is always the distribution of aid is a problem, not just the fact that it's going there. And also, I guess, like, uh, I think the uh, I don't know. I think people de generally like feel very humiliated when they have to depend on aid. So that's like a thing. But I don't disagree with that. Numbers, like, 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 Hamas yeah. is like stealing aid. Yeah. And also, this is as good um, as the mic gets. I think this is better. Much better. Loud. I think there's a lot of accusations about Hamas stealing aid. I'll probably go through that for Castle Ed, Protective Edge, and for the modern conflict. I think a lot of people complain about Hamas stealing aid, including MC International Human Rights Watch, everybody else. Yeah. Um, 
But I don't, I, I don't know. I think if someone says concentration camp, I think a good question, I, I would just say like, okay, it is, then what do you do about it? Let's like rhetorically just get out of that situation because I feel like trying to explain the different parameters between a concentration camp and Gaza is just like a pain in the ass. It's like, well, I think one of the central things that I'm trying to um, put here for the mythological language is that I think that what it's doing is it adjusts the expectations of everybody and removes the agency from the Palestinians. So for instance, if the Palestinians were in subpar living conditions because they haven't figured out what they want their territory to look like with is with Israel, well, what needs to happen? Well, the Palestinians and the Israelis need to come to an agreement on what the territorial distribution should look like. But if the Palestinians live in open air prison concentration camps where they're subject to apartheid and genocide, well, the rest of the world has to do something, right? Like you wouldn't expect mm -hmm. people undergoing genocide and apartheid in concentration camp conditions to save themselves. That's an insane, that's an insane suggestion. So I feel like yeah. part of the reason why people use a lot of this loaded language is it removes all of the agency responsibility from Palestinians and it sets them up to think like, oh, well, somebody else is gonna come in and do something. Clearly we're being genocided. Yeah, that is a problem, yeah. I'm trying to think if there are any concentration camps that would like, <laughs> I don't. I just don't want to sum up some dumb own, and it's like, or something I didn't know. Where it's like, well, actually, the really bad thing are the death camps, and all the major concentration camps got turned into death camps. The bad ones, but actually, the average concentration camp was actually not that bad. They just did a lot of work. They were actually okay, better I than mean, the gulags and the Soviet Union. I don't know. There's like, like some crazy fact like that like, that I'm not aware of. I, I, you can, it, I mean, even if you just follow up really quickly, like what, which concentration camp? Because it definitely wasn't any of the German ones, right? Mm -hmm. Even in Dachau, which was like a prisoner camp, like half the people died. Like half of the prisoners died. I don't fucking. Um, the death rate in Gaza is not 50%, so. Sure. Fucking... Um, infant mortality, um, 16 deaths to 1,000 live births. Um, let's see, we would compare, I think Jordan is a good first step to compare to. Um, there are 106 on both. Gaza is 133, and Gaza here is 91. Higher is worse on this, right? Or better, desperate. higher is worse. <laughs> you don't wanna be first place here. This is infant mortality. Um, I think I'd probably want to compare to, I'll say Jordan uh, and Egypt are like your best comparisons in the region. And then from there you would, and then worse than that would, I, my imagination is gonna be like Libya uh, and Syria, right? Uh, or Perfect. Lebanon, if we want to be really mean. Um, I'm just thinking of like, who would I compare like the people in the Gaza Strip, their living standards to? Oh, okay, yeah. You could ask if it was a if it was a concentration camp under Egyptian rule after forty eight. Are um, the are the American um, the Japanese internment camps were those considered? I know retroactively, I think some people say they're concentration camps, but was that comparison ever made at the time? I um, don't. I think concentration camp used to be a pretty like okay statement. Like people would just say we're putting these political groups into concentration camps. That's what the British used to do for like people who didn't want to fight in the war. Um, oh. One second. A lot of the moral loading around the term concentration camp came after the Holocaust and how it was yeah. very, very public. So not really, not at the time. Gotcha. Let's see. The Jordan rank is 106. Life expectancy. Expectancy. Um, do you guys disagree on the self-immolation thing? I don't Probably know what we do. Is. Do what? You both just talked at the same time. I didn't understand. Loner Box, do you have any thoughts on the uh, self-immolation thing? Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but do it if you want. You know, as long as you're not, as long as you're far away enough from other people so they don't get hit. Yeah, why not? Based, you, Stephen? Um, no, I just don't. I super disagree. I just think it's bad. Am I a cuck for that? You might be. One second. So like in my mind, uh, the big thing is that he's not crazy. That's kind of like the big main argument that I dislike. Okay. Um, I just don't think there's a lot of evidence that the guy's mentally ill. Uh, but in terms of like, is it acceptable as a form of protest? I think there are 
are some situations where it can be entirely justified. Um, obviously, I don't think Palestine applies, but um, I don't know. I can like imagine a case where it is like 1944 or 1940s and someone is setting themselves on fire as a Jew in like America or turning away like one of the boats or whatever. So like I can fathom where it's it makes sense as a statement. You don't think the guy was mentally ill, though? Um, it's possible, but I haven't seen any evidence of it going through some of his post history chat logs and uh, Reddit account. I think I agree with that. I think if you believe what he believes, based on what I read, you would do that. Like you, you would think that's like because you would think that nothing else is wor is working, right? Yeah, nothing else is going to work. Yeah. yeah, and like there was a the lot of meditation that went into it that makes it very obvious that it was uh, not a spur of the moment thing. Like he had a will drafted, and uh, I believe it was his last year of service so he specifically i think wanted to die as a serviceman but don't quote me on that mm -hmm. i uh it's the same opinion that i had r roughly when i was watching the, the the two videos i watched today with the sean and noah samson i think like if you if that if those two videos for example or just like anything like that was the only content you ever consumed on israel palestine you would actually think that like the fourth reich is has uh, manifested itself in the form of a Jewish state and is committing all those crimes against Palestinians with impunity and American support, right? You'd yeah, think all that. Yeah, they're like left-wing Jane Sixers. Like, I don't think they're insane. I just think they have a very different epistemic foundation. I like how people in this fucking chat aren't getting the point. Like, someone Lorna Box disagree, he could spend his life working to help these people. That's what I'm saying. If you believe what he does, you would think it's rational. Not if you believe what you do, okay? Jesus. Welcome to my world loaner box. Yeah, you run I'm into this based. weird conundrum or paradox where, um, do you remember the big stuff in Canada over like the, should you be allowed to kill yourself stuff? Are you talking about the made, medically assisted suicide or the- um, Medically assisted was it suicide. Was the hospital like t telling someone that like they should die instead of get medical treatment? I forget which the one. The medically assisted suicide. Um, the, there's like a catch 22 where people are like, you should have the option to end your own life, but then they draw uh, basically, they say that, like, well, if you want to commit suicide, though, you're mentally unwell, and if you're mentally unwell, you shouldn't be able to end your own life. So you end up in a really weird world where it's like, okay, well, we should have the freedom to choose to kill ourselves, but if you ever want to kill yourself, that means that you're mentally unwell, and therefore you shouldn't be allowed to kill yourself. And I, um, when I was looking at a lot of the rhetoric surrounding this guy, a lot of people were saying things like, well, this guy was clearly mentally unwell because he set himself on fire. And then it's kind of interesting because I thought, well, if we're applying that standard with no other evidence, that technically means that almost every single act of political violence, we can say none of this was actually due to the underlying ideology. It was all because the people were mentally unwell. Like, are we gonna say the guy that drove that car through the Charlottesville march was that guy mentally well? Are we gonna say school shooters are mentally well? Are we gonna say that any form of political violence done by people that's incredibly extreme were mentally well? Like at that point, it feels like you can write off basically every form of extreme political violence is coming from people that are mentally unwell because those are probably gonna be the first affected people by extremist rhetoric are gonna be the people that are on the edges of like sanity, you know? I mean, were the, were the people who carried out the Holocaust mentally well? I mean, the psychologists at the time didn't think so. Yeah, exactly, yeah. They thought those guys were quite normal, like bureaucrats, yeah. Mm -hmm. In this case, specifically with mental illness, I I do not like calling this specifically a suicide, um, just because it is more about, like, inflicting, like, deliberate pain on yourself rather than just killing yourself. And it'll, that is so much more of it than, like, dying. Um, I don't know, it It doesn't feel appropriate to call this a suicide. Well, sure. Maybe, yeah. Okay, well, easiest debate of my life. Well, I, I still think don't think it's a good way to protest. I don't think anybody <laughs> should ever protest that way. I don't think you should ever encourage anybody to protest that way. Um, I mean, <sighs> encourage is weird. Um, I wouldn't say encourage, but I think it is acceptable. Um, what, what do we mean when we say acceptable? Like for instance, like if I were to go uh, in front of a place and I were to like inject heroin into my dick and then shove a glass rod into my eye and snap it off and then jump off a building and land on the concrete but make sure I didn't hurt anybody, is that acceptable? Like we, is the acceptability standard just that we're not actually hurting another human being? Every Everything um, is acceptable there? Or I'm just trying to figure, because when I hear acceptable, well, yeah, in my mind sure. I'm thinking like, should this be like encouraged or seen as a legitimate form of like political protest such that people should always consider it an option? When I say acceptable, I'm thinking like, is there a rational justification for the actions and the consequences? And I think in 
for this action, there can be. Well, hold on. Um, rational justification is begging the question. Obviously, the, it's rationally justified if we consider it to be an acceptable form of protest, like morally. But that's what I'm asking. Should it be an acceptable to like kill yourself for a political cause? Um. Yeah, I think so. Uh. Yeah. Okay. How do these Are motherfuckers in Lebanon live so long? What the fuck? 79 average year. Good job. Sorry. That's the spice, dude. Um, mm -hmm. I guess specifically, when I think acceptable, I think, could you build out a way that this is a political action more than it is just self-harm? Um, is it more like a statement of speech as, a, as an individual um, than it is just hurting yourself for no good reason? And I think that's the case. Like, should someone be allowed to hunger strike in your world? Yeah, but I think hunger strike doesn't generally lead to, like, death, right? Well, yeah, I think the point of this is the extremism. I think it's meant to be an extreme statement, so. There's an interesting uh, standard that I apply. Um, when I went to Iowa, I gave some speech in some school, and there was a head of the head of the poli-sci department. I got to chat with him for a couple hours afterwards just to pick his brain. And he brought up a really interesting thing relating to protests. And it had to do with the difference between peaceful and violent protest. And it was a way to analyze what types of protests you should encourage that I'd never considered before. Um, it, it was in the context of like a lot of the MLK stuff, I think, because I was reading about like nonviolence and principles of all this at the time. And one of the things that he told me was when he considers protests, he tries to think of like, what type of protest would you encourage such that if people did it incorrectly, it wouldn't be that harmful to society. It wouldn't be like destructive. And he was like, one of the problems with violent protests is that if the wrong people violently protest, it's really bad. Um, but if the wrong people engage in like active nonviolence, well, you know, they're protesting, demonstrating, whatever, but it's not as bad. Um, and that perspective of thinking like, okay, well, if I take like forms of protest and I apply them to people that I super disagree with, what are the things that limit, you know, social destruction is kind of a lens that I view that there. So, I don't know, the idea of like green lighting anything relating to death or person to person violence, I think it's really scary. Any type of violence is really scary without having a um, really, yeah. really, really good reason, uh, I think. In this case, um, just because the act is so extreme and there's so much just innate resistance to do it in the first place, mm -hmm. I don't see this as like green lighting everyone to go set themselves on fire. I, that just doesn't seem realistic to me. Mm -hmm. um, outside of the pragmatic, uh, I don't know. I think there's. I think you should be allowed to do something that extreme for if you have like a, a just a, you believe you have a good justification for it. Hmm. Hmm. Why? Let's go to the next stage. Why do you think you should be able to do that? Um, I believe there sh would be instances where, as an individual, your political speech is way more. You could feel your political speech or statement is way more important than your life itself. Uh, so going back to the Holocaust analogy, uh, you're a Jew in America and you want America to in intervene against concentration camps. Uh, but it's over in Germany. No one cares. You set yourself on fire in like, uh, I don't know, a near monument or something. I think that's, I think that's totally justified in my opinion. Hmm. Okay. Well. All right. Anything else? Um, not, not unless um, our friend Bonerbox has anything. I'm fine. Fuck you. All right. Whoa. Peace out, Bonerboy. Peace bye out, bye. Steven. Love you.